in the world we live in i don't need to say hi welcome back to still standing up with craig shoemaker and our fabulous guest aaron murphy by the way talk we were talking about pronunciations my siri doesn't understand the difference between a a r o n and e r i n it drives me crazy i'll say i'll say um <laughs> call aaron murphy and i'll go uh, and then all of a sudden aaron priceman comes up that's my buddy aaron <laughs> so, so I mean, anyway, pronunciation. What what were we debating earlier? Tournament versus tournament. Aunt, aunt. Well, that one, I think we won. <laughs> uh, and aunt. then we're in agreement on that. Well, we're going ant on that one. But some so people say. People watching. People, people watching said ant. Thank you. <laughs> that thank you for your vote of confidence. Okay. I'm looking for more of those today because it started off not a good vote of confidence. Mm. You look it's terrible. Funny. It's funny. Your show is called Still Standing Up and we're still sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> There's all these ironies of life. Tournament, tournament. I just want to just just tournament. put this to Tour bed, okay? Tournament. Tournament. Not tournament. You take someone tour one, two, three, four. Does anyone really care? Does it really matter? Well, when I was on this, I was I played this beautiful golf curse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, that's what it is when you play. <laughs> no, when you're playing, the whole joke is on you. It's a curse. It's not a curse. It's a course. Orse. Tournament. You're not even getting my joke. <laughs> it's a curse I get, when you play. <laughs> get it? <laughs> I don't know oh. if I'm going to be still standing up after this interview. You're sitting down. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I, I'll be lying down after this interview in, in tears, folded up. I want to talk about Serum Bewitched. Mm -hmm. Even your Instagram is called Aaron Murphy Bewitched or something yes, like that. because right? there were so many Aaron Murphys. When yeah. I went, by the time I went on Instagram, there were so many that people kept, they couldn't find me. So I, I went to a thing at um, the Television Academy on social media and I said, what should I do? And whoever was teaching it, um, the person teaching said, if maybe this is a time you do add Bewitched to the name. So when people oh. are looking for me, it's easy to find because now Aaron Murphy is a common name, even though it wasn't when I was little. You're the only survivor wow. on that show. Is that correct? No. Bernie Capel. Bernie Capel's still alive, and the twins who played Adam, the little brother, who was on at the very end. I didn't. Rem oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And they were twins, identical. Yes. Yes. So they did it right then. Yes. In the <laughs> late '60s, early '70s, they were doing it right. Correct. I want to know. People talk about celebrities all the time, right? Mm-hmm. But they didn't really understand. You and I understand celebrities. We're around them for a long time, right? We know there is a difference. What would you say is the fundamental difference between a celebrity and a person anywhere else in the world? What do you think the fundamental difference is, in oh, your opinion? See, and that, this is, I don't even know where you're going with this. I'm not going I, anywhere. I don't know I'm going that, with curiosity. I don't know that there's a fundamental difference. I think you don't? The, Celebrity is a different word than actor. So I don't know if you're saying, I mean, people can be celebrated mm. in a celebrity without being an actor, which is a craft and career job type thing. Mm. So for me, when I'm thinking just generically of what you're probably calling celebrities, it would be actors. And, and for them, it's, it's a job and they've studied it and that's what they do for a living and, and that's their work. And then they go home and they have their life outside of work. If you there's celebrities like, well, there's such an idolizing that goes on. I'm, I'm trying. What I'm, if I'm, if I have an agenda here, it's to let people in. It's 99.9% .9 of the people that are watching are certainly you know, right. We wouldn't consider a celebrity, but a lot of people want to achieve being a celebrity. And I think that's silly. Yeah. I, people. A lot of times, people would say that if you ask them what they want to do, like kids, what do you want to do? They would say they want to be a star or they want to be famous. Yeah. And I've. I guess maybe because I started on television when I was such a young child, I've, I've never seen being a star as something that's aspirational, that there aren't that many perks with being a star. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like anonymity. I'm, I have just the right amount of acting fame that I can still live my life and do what I want with my kids and right. be out in public. And I know people who are very, very well-known actors that still live their lives that way. So I think um, it's kind of how you choose your, to live your life. Right. I'm on the brink of, an, brink of anonymity yes, at, all, at all times. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I've had experiences in both. I've had experiences with both, obviously. And I have found the difference is 
I think that many times if you're a celebrity or if your goal is to be famous, it's a life that's not fulfilled because you're always after the next thing. So you worked with people who are celebrities. Certainly, we're talking about them today after 30 years after death, after their death. That's a celebrity. That's, a, that's someone famous. Actors, is that what I consider them. But <laughs> yes. off the stage, off the, in front of the cameras, they were someone else mm -hmm. to you. You mm -hmm. had a unique relationship with every one of them. Absolutely. Was there anyone who was an influence in your life that maybe oh, even yeah. some of the tenets of life that they share with you, you use today? Absolutely. I, in retrospect, I, so much of my life is, is similar in ways to Elizabeth Montgomery because I was with her for such a long period of my, you know, I was on the show. It ran eight years. I was on for six years. And, um, so I grew up seeing her every day and seeing how she played a housewife and a witch on TV, but also she was involved with the production of the show and, and was very equal to every man mm, on set and mm. all that. So I, I think a lot of my confidence maybe came from her that I have always felt, since I was a very young kid, always felt comfortable like walking into a group of adults when I was a kid and talking to people. And, and I think from her, I have my Definitely got my dirty sense of humor from Elizabeth Montgomery <laughs> and um, a lot of other things, kind of my work ethic too. So mm. took that from her. Agnes Moorhead was probably my favorite person on the show. Wow. Yeah. Um, I looked at her as a grandma and my grandparents lived out of state. And she was nurturing. Absolutely she was. And she was my grandma. I'd see her every day and she would, you know, make me little cartoons of mice and witches and things. And mm. I, I loved her so much. And so she actually talked about the craft of acting. Mm. And she was someone who just inspired me greatly. So oh, That's great. Yeah. I love that it's two strong, successful women were your influences, and you became a strong and successful woman. Oh, thank you. Outside of acting and things like that, you've had businesses. Mm -hmm. I want to know about the, the knitwear <laughs> that I have never had on me. <laughs> Sounds a little itchy. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> um, I, I no longer have a knitwear company. Um, I'm a mom, which we haven't talked about um, today. I yeah, you did. You said you helped oh, your yes, son. Yes, yes, yes. But um, one of my children has autism, so... Mm -hmm. um, Years ago, um, he, uh, I would take him to therapeutic horseback riding. So I started um, volunteering there weekly and then ended up with horses in a ranch of my own and ended up getting alpacas because I'm that person. It's like, oh, horses, what else can I get? So I had goats and chickens and alpacas. And when you have alpacas, once a year you shear them. And I ended up with just piles and piles of alpaca fiber, mm -hmm. which is um, like, I could go into the knitwear business but it's about a hollow fiber that's like cashmere really? and so i learned how to once again went to a class i think would always encourage people to have a thirst for knowledge i always want to learn things i want i to so agree everything. if anyone wants to get a tip from this show <laughs> for inter interviewing with you or t talking to me that's what it is you've got to be curious absolutely remain curious totally. and remain open and remain willing yeah. To you listen. can learn new things. So uh, I learned how to spin alpaca fiber into yarn, started wow. a knitwear company um, called Aaron Murphy Knits and would um, sell hats and scarves and sweaters and donate them to charities. But I don't have the knitwear company anymore. But I, I, I love that though, but I've never seen a Hollywood red carpet and you go, what are you wearing? Alpaca. <laughs> oh, you got to watch more. They do. <laughs> they do. Yeah. I'm, I'm wearing alpaca. I, I haven't seen it. I don't watch anymore. It's like cashmere. It's well, fun. one of the reasons related to what I'm saying with the whole fame thing, I don't watch the award shows anymore. And I'm not sad about it. Yeah, it's it's hard for me. I'm, I'm in the Television Academy, so I can yeah. go to the Emmys. Yeah. Um, I, I struggle with it a lot. I still, I watch everything. I get the screeners, watch our, all the films. I, I don't really know how you can judge um, performances because I can appreciate a film and an actor's performance. And how do you say that this actor is better than that actor? Where they're they're both great. So it, and, and it's so political. It's so political. Yeah. And I and I want out. I want out. I used to be fine with it. I used to. Go, oh yes, that's their platform. They should say that or whatever it is. But it's so biased. There's nobody, for instance. You know, this is what I say about the whole woke thing. There's nobody talking about Native Americans. You know. Like, because they're not it. They're not a hashtag. There's no hashtag trail of tears. So, so I'm, I'm not woke 
because I support that, but I don't support. No, it's just it's it's become so ridiculous and biased and prejudiced and intolerant, and that's what I found that a, a lot of the case with Hollywood is they're out of touch. That's why I was asking you earlier about the people that you're working with were are certainly huge celebrities at the time, but how much in touch with reality were they and how much value did they give to you, to your character, which exists today. That's what you learned from them. Yeah, no, I think a lot. You didn't learn from a speech. <laughs> you didn't learn from a speech about here's the way you should, here's, here's who we should concentrate on. Here's your hat. Here's your ribbon. We decided if you don't wear the ribbon, then you're not woke and all that kind of thing. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And the other point you're making is without being direct is, they get they choose what you're supposed to like like a film that you're supposed to like you're yeah, supposed to I, like it i disagree with that i yeah. think, i think i'm a strong believer in free will that yeah. i i like watching everything because i i can appreciate the work that goes into producing a film or tv show so no one could tell me what to like i like the foods i like i like most people <laughs> I, I have my own opinion so i've I hope as a parent, I've raised my kids to have their own thoughts. And I am one person who does, if someone will write on, on social media that they hated a film and why they hated the film, I will um, chime in that I love the film. And it, chime I, in. <laughs> she used chimes as we're hearing chimes that coming from chime. somewhere. <laughs> coming from, now that's someone who's in her body. That's someone who's in her strength. She's... She, <laughs> something was chiming and she put chiming into her monologue right. i love it i wanted to mention one movie that i could not believe how much i loved it okay and i wouldn't have even seen it if it was up to hollywood okay they tore it down from there's no more you know but didn't go on disney they were supposed to sound of freedom have you seen it no it's extraordinary Okay. And because I, I, it's I'll not watch it because I, I truly try to watch everything. Well, you watch it now because your friend suggested yeah. that you watch it because I'm not talking about it's like a good movie. It's a really great movie. True story. And it has a cause okay. has a cause with the true story that I thought was spectacular. It's something needs to be talked about more sex trafficking. And if I'm to get anything across to anyone is we need to pay attention. You don't really pay attention to what they deliver to you, what they say you're supposed to pay attention to. Pay attention to all of it. See what they are hiding in saying, oh, look over here. What are they hiding over here? So that, that's something that I think if we're going to have a theme for anything of why you were my first guest on the maiden voyage, we didn't crash, there was no iceberg, almost, <laughs> but it's because of your authenticity and, and also what you've been through in life. I, I like that you laughed at my saying that you read over here. Resilience is your brilliance. Now, why did you laugh at that? I want to know what happened with you internally that you said, you read that, you go, resilience is your brilliance. I said, yeah, it's my slogan. And you would, <laughs> and a little giggle. Tell me what that was about. Um, I, I laughed in, in a completely polite way because you are my friend. But um, because... I don't always go for mottos, so, so it made me laugh because I get it. It's it's nice to have a tagline that that kind of sums up what you are, and I get resilience is your brilliance. I like that it's um, you know it, it, it rhymes. <laughs> I love seatbelt selfie. <laughs> remember, everybody, if you're watching and listening, remember, always take a seatbelt selfie. It may not, no, and I'll say no. It Remember, may not work for you, it, that's going to work. <laughs> that will motivate you through your day. Don't forget, enough of these putting post it notes on your mirror. It's done. It's been done. That was in the 80s, okay? Today, if you're going to learn anything from this show, from our guest, Aaron Murphy, seatbelt selfie. So untrue. Ignore I it. I want to I see plenty of them sent to me. That is your goal, everyone. Send as many seatbelt selfies as you can to me. Post them on my website. Post them on craigshoemaker.com, official Craig Shoemaker on Instagram. Post them everywhere. Seatbelt selfies. It's going to sweep the nation. And so I'm there's say, your motto. I'm there's your little <laughs> motto. I'm saying you should, um, if you're, if you're going to be on social media, go with your audience and be in on the joke. I think the seatbelt selfie things, I don't post it because I think I'm beautiful. I don't post it to have people say, oh, you look so pretty. Yes, you I do. do. No, and I don't. Yes, I don't. I'm in on the joke. I know that um, for an audience on social media that for whatever reason, 
people do like those photos more, somehow they get shared more. And so to then have them scroll scroll over to the next photo where I'm talking are about you, my family, talking about- Are you charity. using a filter? That's all I want to know. Not usually. No. Usually. No, not usually. Usually. Occasionally I'll do something to, to lighten the background. But no, I'm not a big Lighten the filter. background. Nothing no, to do not, with nothing no, in the no, foreground. No face tune. Wait, listen, I am not a big filter user. I'm really wow. not. I found that in my car, I drive a Tesla, and the, the, something about the windshield filters the light in a great way. And I have a couple friends whose names I won't mention, and we've talked about selfies, and they've started posting the same ones and said, I don't know what it is about the windshield being a filter to the light, but it makes the photos really flattering. So try it out in your car, you'll see. <laughs> oh, now I gotta go buy a Tesla so I can look good, so people can compliment me. <laughs> well, listen, I will compliment you. I'm so happy you're my first guest in more ways than, than, than why, why I can even Come transfer to you i can come up with two okay here are the ways i'm happy you're my first guest i love authenticity i won't say i love resilience and being brilliant <laughs> that motto is going out the window all these mottos we worked on resilience anyway, throw, is throw, your throw brilliant, another one of them throw, throw another resilience one is come on. brilliance. what's that you win from within <laughs> <laughs> Wow. We're getting the votes now. I said people need to vote. What's another one? Come on, Frankie. Another one of my... You've got to remember. We, 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 I, had, I had 10 of them I rattled off. Repetition is your intuition. Repetition is your intuition. I don't, you can sn snark at that all you want. It's true. The Repetition more Repetition is your intuition. Becomes your intuition. You oh. intuitively handle oh. things because... Repetition helps you learn a skill. You can learn something by... by a skill that becomes intuitive. You need to take my course. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I know. She starts with a one on her scale I'm of one stress. to ten on stress. My we'll God. We'll talk another time about why that is. All right. We will. All right. Well, thank you for being our guest today. Now, do I look at the camera here and say. Which one? There's four. I know. There's four cameras. By the way, Aaron, Aaron was the perfect first guest because we're from the same generation. And she was trying to talk to me, like, look at me the whole time. Right. Not, no, they told yeah, you to were. Straight I know they did. But I watched you go like this because you want to have eye contact. We're supposed polite. to look. It's, <laughs> exactly. That's we we learned. Oh, uh, by the way, that's a key to what we did learn in our generation. Polite, mm -hmm. absolute manners. We learned manners when we were growing up. I, I look. I I might be old school and old, but you. Sh but you're I. Old, you're my age. I know, but that's <laughs> we're getting there. But I think that we should have more manners, and I think that this is. That decorum that can take place, it's too much battling going on. That's the one thing that we all have in common when we go on our fishing trips. None of us are battling. None of us are going to, well, Greg brings some politics in, but he's very friendly. About it. But, but I mean, it, it, just be one with each other and that kindness and decorum and politeness and taking each other in and taking in your energies. And that's what I'm going to suggest to everybody, if that's your takeaway today, Without one of my slogans, <laughs> which apparently, boom, they're going, wow. You know what's going to happen now? If I'm going to ask for a vote, they're all going to go, I'm with Aaron. <laughs> That's my whole life is, I'm with so-and-so. Anybody but you, Craig. I d battle with my kids. They're like co-counselors now against me. Unbelievable. Well, I'm just happy. Whoever tuned in today, whoever checked out this podcast, that you're here. I hope you stay here. hope you continue to come back. And we're going to have more nuggets for you to enjoy, okay? Whether it's a slogan, <laughs> whether it's something that we did to help ourselves, to help others, be of service to others. I think this is a big key of life. And check us out the next time because we have a whole cavalcade of guests coming in. I want to thank our first guest, Aaron Murphy, for stopping in today. And we'll see you the next time on Still Standing Up with Craig Shoemaker. Sitting down.